Hey, I'm Donald Bell for Cool Tools, and today in this video, we're gonna talk about hobby knives, often called X-Acto knives because of the popular brand name. But if you've got an X-Acto brand hobby knife, I'm here to tell you, you're probably due for an inexpensive upgrade. I've got 10 that I'm gonna show you. Most of them are recent innovations, and I've got Amazon links for all of them down here in the video description. Let's start off by quickly going over the pros and cons of a classic X-Acto brand hobby knife. These are easy to find, inexpensive, and they use a standardized system of replacement blades. What stinks is that they roll around and they get loose because you're constantly gripping the element that tightens and loosens it. And even when it's fully clamped down, the blade can still slip out. The hard, slick design can also hurt your hands after a while. Exacto has their own answer to these complaints and it's called the Gripster. It's around $6 and it has a soft rubber coating on the barrel and the tensioner is moved up to the top, along with a flat-sided nut that prevents it from rolling too much. It's all right, but again, no matter how tight I make this thing, I can still just pull the blade right out. For both safety and precision, that's a deal breaker. Fortunately, there's a better version of this design that's cheaper and even made in the USA. This soft grip hobby knife from Excel is just $3.50, and you can see why it does a better job. The gripper for the blade comes in at four directions. The blades on all the X-Acto models I have only pinch it from two directions. You've got the tensioner in the back where it's out of the way, and the flat-sided hex nut has more surface area to keep it from rolling around. If you do nothing else, stop this video here and drop $4 on this option and call it a day. But here's one from Fiskars that surprisingly got it wrong. It's the Fiskars Soft Grip. It sells for around $7. Same idea with the adjustment at the top and a four point grip on the blade and arguably a better barrel design with this ergonomic grip. The problem is, at least on mine, the adjustment is really tough and twists inside the barrel. I can get it to release the blade by gripping near the blade, but that doesn't feel safe. Fortunately, there's a better version of this from Fiskars called the Easy Change Detail Craft Knife. It sells for $8 and has a nearly identical shape that's very comfortable to hold and doesn't roll on your table. This is my favorite craft knife here and I probably should have saved it for the end, but here's why it's so cool. To change the blade, you pull the end back until it clicks, bend it down, and you can gently just remove the blade. Despite the fact that the blade is only gripped from two sides, it is really stuck in there. I don't know what they're doing to get such a great fit, but it works and hopefully it won't loosen up over time. While we're at it, here's another Fiskars quick release design but for a heavy duty number two blade. This one is around $6, it has a bigger, chunkier handle, and one side is somewhat flattened out and uses a gray rubber that's got a little give to it. Overall, it feels more like using a big Sharpie. I imagine if you've got a little arthritis, this might be less painful to hold, but I can't say for certain. The balance is unusual for this because the back of the knife is not only bigger, but also has the easy change hardware. I can't say if that's good or bad, but you notice it. I also noticed that the blade grip on here isn't quite as tight as the smaller detail knife. It's good, but without a way to do any fine adjustment on it, you either have to live with it or look for another option. I also thought the blade cover for this was insufficient. It's kind of hard to put on without stabbing yourself. Now here's a really unique option. This one's from Excel, who made that great cheap option I showed at the beginning. This is a retractable blade in a metal clip-on pen design. It's $10, but it feels very James Bond. There's a fine knurled grip on the tip of the barrel. A button above the clip retracts the knife with a very satisfying click. As you'd imagine, the blade itself is about half the size of a standard number 11 blade. This also makes them a specialty to reorder. A two pack of replacement blades on Amazon runs around $7, almost as much as the knife. Still, it's a cool design and neat that it completely retracts into the barrel for safety. That said, there's nothing to prevent it from accidentally getting engaged if anything pushes up against the plunger so I wouldn't keep this in a pocket. For a somewhat safer alternative to a retractable hobby knife, there's this brand called Penblade. They're designed for surgeons. I got a three pack of these for around $9 and each comes with a different type of blade. Unlike the Excel design, these cover up the plunger a little bit to help prevent them from being triggered accidentally. Of all the designs, if I had to keep one in a pocket or a bag, I'd go with this. There are a bunch of neat features. You get a ruler on one edge, Imperial on one side and metric on the other. The types of blades are color coded and labeled on the side and a recess on the tip allows you to cut through string or sutures even while the blade is retracted. 
The main drawback to these is that the blades are non-replaceable. Once this stalls out, you just have to order a new one. On the upside, the barrel becomes its own sharps container by snapping off the plunger. Definitely the most innovative design of all the options I've seen here. Now I'm gonna throw some real wild cards at you. This one's the Slice Precision Cutter. It's $8 and it also has a permanent blade. Fortunately, this blade is made from ceramic. It's advertised as lasting 11 times longer than a comparable steel blade, plus there's no chance of it getting rusty. It's also safer than a typical blade. I can gently poke my finger with it without getting cut and there's much less exposed blade. It reminds me of a super sharp fish tooth. The downside I noticed for this design is that it can be hard to see exactly where you're cutting because the blade is so short. The designers placed a line right above the blade as a way to orient you, but for fine work where you want to see exactly where your blade is, it can be frustrating. It's also one of the skinniest grips of any of the other designs I tested, so if you struggle to grip small things, skip this one. Could be a great choice for kids though, both in terms of safety and grip size. Next oddball option is the Fisker's Fingertip Craft Knife. It's around $5 and it takes conventional replacement blades. This is a whole different way to work. You place the grip on your finger like a ring. It takes some getting used to, but what I love about this design is that it takes the strain off your fingers. You can let go of the pressure you'd normally apply just to hold the knife up. Your fingers are really just there to guide the blade. It feels less like holding a pen and more like picking at something with your fingernail. If you're doing really fine work, I think it's worth getting, especially for $5. Finally, let's go crazy. Here's a Fisker's Circle Cutter. It's $15, and I learned about this one from watching the videos from product designer Eric Strebel. If you've ever tried to cut a circle by hand, you know how impossible it can be to get a good result. This will cut perfect circles in paper or cardstock or even thin sheets of plastic. It takes a little getting used to because the action isn't quite what you'd think. The plunger in the middle here holds the material down at the center and the blade is this little bit at the end of this adjustable arm. And its pressure isn't dictated by the pressure on the plunger. This is great because you can hold down delicate materials tight but still use gentle pressure to cut them out. The two main limitations here are that you can only cut circles as wide as eight inches and the blades are unique. You can swap them out and you get two extra blades in the package. The design even includes a place to store the extra blades. Still, it's not a future-proof design. So there you go. You're up to speed now on some of the different options out there that will put your old Exacto to shame. You can find Amazon links to all the options down here in the description and you can see thousands of reader-recommended tools like these at cool-tools.org.